Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a quick demonstration of analog to digital conversion uh, since we didn't really get to it in the lecture. So, ADC analog to digital conversion, I'm going to write this out real quick, is the process of taking a continually varying signal, such as like a sinusoid, and digitizing it in a way that a computer can understand or translating it in a way a computer can understand. Like I said, the things around us and the parameters that we want to measure generally vary in nature. Like if you wanted to measure the voltage across someone's chest, you know, to plot their EKG, for instance, that voltage you know, can vary from, you know, a very small one to a very large one. So how do we translate that analog signal to something that a computer can understand? Yeah, I mentioned in class that computer systems are digital, so they really only have one states high. Or low. Um, in the context of the Arduino, high corresponds to 5 volts and zero corresponds to zero volts. But what if we wanted to read some voltage in between? Would well, we do that through ADC? And so ADC, the process by which um, a circuit does this in and of itself is fairly complicated. But for our practical measures, it's actually really simple to understand what's going on. So the ADC, uh, we think of it in terms of how many bits it, ha it has. And I'll just go ahead and write that out. The Arduino has a 10-bit ADC. So what that means is for us, it has 1,024 different states that voltages between 5 and 0 can fall underneath. So what that means is if you have, if the Arduino gives you a value of 0 on its ADC, that corresponds to 0 volts. If the Arduino gives you a value of 1,023 on its ADC, that corresponds to 5 volts. And I know I said 1,024 states, and I wrote 1,023 here. Um, that's because in the way we count numbers, we count from 1 to 1,024. But things are zero indexed when it comes to computers. So what that means is they start from zero and go to 1,023. That's why we have 1,023 here. OK, so what if we wanted to read a voltage in between 0 and 5 volts? So everything in between, at this point on, is just a proportion. So if you want to calculate, let's say, if we're reading, sorry about that, I had to turn something off real quick. If we're reading 2.5 volts off our EKG or you know or whatever, what does that correspond to as an analog to digital converter number on the Arduino right here? And we do that by a simple proportion. So I don't know how you guys do proportions, but I usually do is over of equals is over of and do cross multiplication. Uh, that's just the way I've always been taught ever since I was a little kid. So we'll just do it this way. But however way you do proportions is all up to you. And so I'll write an explicit equation here for your reference. So if you wanted to think about it this way, as I'm writing here, we can do something like raw ADC value. This is the value that the analog to digital converter on the Arduino is going to give us over max number of states, which in our case is 1,024, equals voltage over reference voltage. In this case our reference voltage is 5 volts but we can actually change that to a few different values on the Arduino or if you use a different ADC um, it might have a different reference voltage. So the raw ADC is what we're looking for. The max number of states is 1024 like we said earlier. The voltage that we're reading is 2.5 volts and the reference voltage is, is 5 volts. So just do a little cross multiplication here. I'll just do this real quick. and you solve for x by dividing both sides by this here. And that will give us somewhere around 511, depending where that extra 1 falls. So if we were to read a voltage of 2.5 from whatever, our Arduino would give us an analog to digital converter number of 5111. And following that, if it was like you know 1.25, it would give us a value of something like 200 and, I don't know, think of that number, 56 or something like that. Again you know, just half of this or a quarter of four, a quarter of five. So again, like everything is just a proportion from there. So so in the case of our accelerometer, you know, we were talking about this in class. See, the accelerometer gives up acceleration data. So it measures acceleration in three different axes, at least the one we were using. Oh, well, this is x. And this is the, and so it measures the acceleration due to gravity on three different axes, and then it produces a voltage 
This voltage is read by the ADC on the Arduino. Returns an ADC value. And that ADC value corresponds to a voltage. And then we can use that voltage that we read and get an acceleration. So in the first case, you were supposed to lay the, the accelerometer flat on the table. And if you got to this part, when you read the value from the analog to digital converter, you know, it gave you data in the X, Y, and Z axes. You don't have to worry about these. But in the Z axis, that number was somewhere around 505. And so if we do our little equation, the cal calculation, like we did up here, we can figure out what voltage that corresponds to. So 505 over 1024, and we're looking for a voltage, and the reference voltage is 5. So if we just go back and fill in our equation from up here, our raw ADC values, our raw ADC values, um, 505. In this case, our max number of states is, states is still 1024, and we're looking for a voltage. So if we do our cross multiplication here, X is going to turn out to be something like 2.45 volts, or somewhere around there. You know, the accuracy isn't exactly isn't exactly 1%. And so, how do we take that voltage that we have? and get some acceleration. Well, we do that by looking at the data sheet on, of the accelerometer. And that should be on Oak, and I'll put also this, a link to it um, down in the description box so you can look at it. So when you look at it and open it up, it looks something like this. And if we go down to page 5 or 6, I think it is. It's 6. We're focusing on this part here. So this is the view that we have right now. You know, the top at the top here and the bottom here, we're just going to go over to the z-axis. And as you can see from the data sheet, the z-axis experiences plus 1g um, gravitational acceleration when the voltage is equal to 2.45. And, and this is a similar orientation as having it flat on the table. So if we look at what we have here, what we just calculated, that's exactly what we have. So we have a 2.45 volts, that's where, we're read, that's where we're reading from the accelerometer, and it's flat on the table. So that means that it's experiencing 1g um, worth of acceleration. And that makes sense. If it's flat on the table, then gravity is pointing directly down on the z-axis and experiencing exactly 1g. So, so yeah, that's just how you do it. Uh, the next part of the lab, uh, you're supposed to flip it upside down. And we didn't exactly get to that, so I'll just do that real quick right now. I'll have to do some back calculating here. So the voltage that we should be experiencing, it's this orientation right here, should be 0.85 volts. And so if we did this here with the Arduino upside down and the accelerometer upside down, and then we calculated, uh, then we read the value from the ADC. The ADC is going to give us a value somewhere around 180, 170. Like I said, it's not exactly accurate. This is ADC. And if we do the math, um, let's just pick 170. And we cross multiply, do our little proportion here. X is going to be somewhere around 1.65, or no, actually, I'll take that back. It's going to be 0 0.85. 0 0.85 volts. And if we look at uh, our data sheet again, 0 0.45 volts. Let me get rid of this. This is the orientation we're looking at. The accelerometer is currently upside down. And if you look at the Z axis and we get a voltage of 0.85 volts, that means experiencing 1G in the opposite direction. So if our accelerometer is up, upside down, that means we're, we're um, experiencing 1G in the, in the opposite direction. And that's exactly what we get here. So again, if you did this upside down, you're supposed to get 170 from the ADC. And that corresponds to 0.85 volts, which looking from our data sheet corresponds to negative 1G. So again, that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me and ask me. But I just wanted to really get you guys to, I just wanted to be able to explain this to you all. And there are multiple links that you can find online, but I just really wanted to convey the information that I thought was necessary for you to know for the lab.